Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. For today's video, I wanna review some of the latest data out of China in respects to Tesla. Looks like their price cuts are not just working really well, but they're dominating that region. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. A lot to talk about. David M, TLZ, Mark B, and Alex K. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Really appreciate you. You can do the same by clicking on join right below this video. You get access to exclusive content on Fridays, as well as access to our private Discord. So, tweet from stock. Talk Weekly, Stock Talk Weekly. <laughs> Definitely follow this uh, channel or uh, tw uh, user on Twitter. Great information every single day. Tesla Model Y becomes number one best-selling passenger vehicle in China for Q1 of 2023 with 94.6 thousand deliveries. Tesla Model 3 in top 10 for March and top 15 for Q1 of 2023. Here's a chart. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit more so it's easier for you to see. Tesla Model Y at the top with 94,600 units thereabouts. And number 14 is a Tesla Model 3 at 42,800 units. And then you have a bunch of other cars in the middle. Here's the BYD Song Plus, the Volkswagen La Vida, Nissan Selfie, uh, Wuling, Hongguang Mini, so on and so forth. But one of the things that I did is I overlaid the starting price of every single one of these competitors for China in Q1. And so I took the chart that was provided by Stock Talk and I layered in the starting price of those vehicles in China. I used Bing Chat for this information. If you see any flaws, do drop them in the comments, but I did cross check a lot of them and it looks like they're pretty accurate, very much in the ballpark. And the key thing that sticks out here, and I've highlighted the two Tesla vehicles, the Model Y and the Model 3, is that both of these cars are the most expensive cars you can buy, uh, at least from a starting price in this entire list. They're one of the few cars that are battery electric vehicles you have uh, in the top five. Two of them are actually battery electric. The other three are either gas cars or hybrids. And those two are by far the most expensive vehicles on the list. And what's really weird is that even with that, Tesla was able to capture increasing market share with the two most expensive cars in that region in the top 15 for the first quarter in China. And the Tesla Model Y obviously is also the largest by sales volume from a units perspective at 94,600 with the highest sticker price. And again, they're able to achieve this sort of market share from 2018 to 2023. You can see how it's increased and it looks like we've had another step change for the first quarter of 2023. So what this means is that the Tesla Model Y in China is the best selling, most expensive, and also the most profitable vehicle in that region, which I don't know the last time that has been able, that was an, an achievement by any other automaker, which I think uh, bodes really well, not just for Tesla, but for the EV segment in, in general, because they have a proven sort of track record here of saying, hey, if you have a really good product, that's an electric vehicle, that's priced at the right levels, people will buy it. And I think that's a great sign for the industry. If you've enjoyed this content so far, we'd love it if you throw me a like, it helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people. Thank you so much. Some other data that we can sort of, uh, extrapolate out from this. If you take the uh, China numbers in uh, that was I just showed, 35% of Tesla's total for the quarter were sold in China. So that's about 150,000 total Model 3s and Y on 422,000 total deliveries in Q1. And we, if we assume the same sort of like a similar breakout of Model Ys and Model 3 and work in a little bit of SNX for the entire global region, this also means that about 60% of Teslas that are sold right now, or at, or at least in Q1, are Model wise. So that's another sort of piece of information that I think we've learned from this. More than half of Tesla sales are from the Model Y, which uh, I believe is not, it could be Tesla's best uh, product from a margin perspective, a margin percentage perspective, especially with Berlin and Austin ramping. So just that's an important thing to keep in mind, I believe. Of the 422,000 deliveries that they sold, if you take that 60% and you apply to that number, about 253,000 total uh, Model Ys were sold in Q1. So 250,000, a quarter of a million Model Ys was, were sold in Q1. So what this means is that if Tesla were just to repeat the first quarter three more times for the rest of the year, Tesla should be able to sell about a million Model Ys in 2023 globally for the, for, for the full year. And so what this means, just based on all the trends that we have in the auto market, is that Tesla will have by far the best-selling car globally, period, not from revenue, but from units in 2023, which would be an incredible achievement. And why is that? 
you have a company that's a pure EV player. So the Model Y is a pure EV. It's not a hybrid. It's not a gas car. Its global average selling price is somewhere around $50,000 per car. And it's been able, it's going to be able theoretically to achieve this top sold car in the market period from a unit volume with zero advertising. And I put it in another slide, zero advertising. And I, I don't know, this is a big deal. <laughs> you tell me in the comments. This seems like a really, really big deal. Most expensive, pure EV, zero advertising, a million units per year, best uh, car globally in all of 2023, most likely. And so I really want to start a discussion around this around this because a lot of people in the community have been talking about it. Great discussions on Twitter, great discussions on YouTube. I want to sort of highlight where I'm coming from and some of the variables that are at play with this specific equation. I, real quick, I do want to highlight that I do have a Substack at farzamesbahi.substack.com, articles every single Wednesday. Our new one will go live uh, tomorrow. And so if you're interested, I have a link for that in the description below. I'm not going to make you read this, don't worry. <laughs> but this is a thread, not a, really a thread. It was a, a big post that I put on my Twitter account at Farziness, F-A-R-Z-Y-N-E-S-S, if you want to follow that outlining my thoughts around advertising. And so I want to sort of summarize this for you here on YouTube so we can start a discussion in the comments because I would I would really love to hear what you have to say. So the question becomes, now that Tesla has this sort of dominant position or is going down a route of sort of lowering prices in the last quarter to try and, and stir up more demand, should they advertise? And so one of the core components on the side of advertising from what I'm learning is that not many people seem to be aware or know that about Tesla's that they exist, what they're all about. We know about all the FUD and all the different things that mass media has put out about the company and Elon Musk and all this stuff. And a lot of people don't are not necessarily aware of how affordable these cars truly are. It's it's kind of hard to fathom that a fifty thousand dollar car wouldn't reach the best-selling car in the globe in 2023 potentially without being a lot more affordable than it seems because it doesn't you don't pay for gas you don't have a lot of maintenance so on and so forth right and then the uh, other argument is that it's much cheaper to run ads versus lowering price. So if the whole thing behind Tesla is we're going to lower price to make more people more aware of their product, then the argument becomes just make an ad for $100 million for three months or whatever, and that will get you just as many sales for a lot cheaper than essentially giving away uh, X number of dollars through a price decrease. So I want to share my take and I would love to hear yours in the comment section below and let me know if I'm missing anything from uh, the advertising side. So Tesla's core principle from the very beginning, and I can say this as somebody who's worked at the company for over four years, I left in 2021, in case you're not aware, from 2017 to 2021, I was working there. And this is very much part of the culture of the company. It's uh, the core principle is to advance the advent of sustainable transport, which is part of their mission statement. Um, under that, every single action that Tesla takes, and they have taken, and from my experience, what I saw in the company is that every single thing that Tesla did was centered around this idea that everything the company does is to advance the advent of sustainable transport. And if you look at basically most any product in the history of mankind, especially globally, cost is the ultimate decider for 80% and or more, 80% or more of the global population. Don't think about just very well-off uh, countries and very well-off segments. When you're thinking about just regular Joe, basically most of the people that are probably watching this, uh, cost is a huge deciding factor of purchasing something. And this was something for me for the longest time. It still is, even though I'm very fortunate to, our, to, to be where I'm at, I'm still thinking about price. Price is very, very important. And so one of the analogies I like to use, okay, so when you go buy your toothpaste. Do you buy the best toothpaste? Do you buy the best marketed toothpaste? Or do you buy the best price toothpaste, right? And it's going to be different for, for, for a lot of people, but I'm willing to bet that 80% of the people that are answering this or a large majority are going to pick the best price toothpaste because that's what they're really looking for. And so within the context of Tesla, believe it or not, even though these are very aspirational products, the goal with Tesla has and always will be the same, I believe, as long as Elon Musk is at the company. There was a tweet that Elon Musk made uh, in April, on April 7th, which was what, five days ago now, four days ago, in response to Holmar's catalog, Omar, which by the way, he's coming on my channel next week to preview uh, 
quarter one earnings and also talk about FST. So I'm very much looking forward to that conversation. So one of the comments that Elon made is so many well off critics don't understand that demand at scale is limited by affordability. There is plenty of demand for our products. But if the price is more money than people have, that demand is irrelevant. And so from Tesla's perspective, Elon Musk as a spokesman of, 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 of Tesla, even though he only has the Twitter icon, <laughs> Tesla says there is awareness, but pricing needs to be lower. So from that perspective, it doesn't look like it's an argument of uh, advertising is going to generate more awareness. The awareness is there. It's all about affordability. And so another thing, another way to think about this too is, as we're thinking about the the full planet and everybody that lives in it, most people on planet Earth, period, cannot afford most things. And even though we're thinking about Teslas in this case that are more aspirational products, like I said before, and they're a lot more expensive than a freaking toothpaste, there is a sort of threshold that you can cross that says, hey, now way more people can afford this. And it looks like Tesla is really trying to drive towards that specific goal. And so from my perspective as an investor and have been invested for 10 years, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I really think the first order of business should be to get costs down as low as humanly possible, period. Forget about advertising, just get those damn costs down as quickly as humanly possible so that the company can widen the net of how many people they could potentially sell to. So don't pull people in, push the product out, allow people to be able to just say, hey, that one's mine, I'm gonna buy it because I can afford it. The other thing to keep in mind here is that COVID from 2020 to 2022, uh, it disrupted pricing a lot through a lot of supply chain shortages, raw material increases, just overall inefficiency in the system. It was quite, quite insane. And we saw Tesla do, and basically every automaker do a lot of price increases to try and get ahead of the impact of these disruptions because everything became a lot more expensive. We don't have to talk about inflation. Everybody has felt inflation. And so we're just starting to get back to pre-COVID pricing levels. We, you know, just in 2023, one would think that with all the disruptions out of way and really with a shrinking economy, you're gonna have suppliers and the supply chain start to open up dramatically. One of the places that we're really starting to see this as of late, which I've covered before on the channel, is lithium carbonate prices. So this is the raw material for one of the grades of the lithium that's used for EV batteries. It's down over 60% from its 2022 peaks. You still have to refine it. And you, there are other types of lithium like hydroxide that you can use for batteries. But the cost of that has been coming down dramatically. And this is one of the largest costs associated to an electric vehicle. You also have in the case of Tesla, there's a lot of scale and efficiencies between 2020 and 2023 that have not been realized. Those cost decreases from the raw materials is one, better contracts at higher volumes because Tesla is growing as a manufacturer is another one, Berlin and Austin ramping is another one, having Tom Zhu running around and getting all these factories ramped up as the VP of, of Auto, Auto Now is another one, you have more talented folks that are more experienced is another one, single piece casting and 4680 is another one, so that I can go down the, down the line, right? Getting Tesla energy ramped up and realizing those earnings to try and drive the cost down of the batteries is another one. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot. And so from that perspective and not advertising and really focusing on co bringing costs down, this is also a forcing function for the Tesla team to build the best product, period. And that's something that I experienced firsthand is that our, our whole mantra really was don't buy it because we told you, buy it because it's the best product, period. And this, I just, I kept, you know, in, in some way, shape or form, this was uttered by so many different people. Don't give, like, just give somebody no excuse to buy the product. And from a culture perspective, that's extremely powerful. And when you're not advertising, you essentially put that onus on the, on the staff and the leadership team that says, I don't really care if we are not advertising or we will advertise. We want the people to buy the product because we are the best period. And awareness becomes a separate conversation, but from the uh, conversation that Elon had on Twitter, it does appear like awareness is not a problem. And so from that perspective, you know, from that perspective, it seems to be a very powerful equation. Delighting the customer, from my experience in business, is by far the best way to ensure that you have somebody who is sticky, uh, a person that really wants to work with your product, work with your business, and think about all the experiences that you've had from your perspective when you buy something, which are the ones that are memorable. It's probably the ones that have delighted you, that you're like, holy crap, I can't believe how good this thing is. And so 
when you're delighting the customer, there's two different ways that happens. You either do uh, uh, in a, make your product in a way so that people can't wait but talk about it. So word of mouth, which Tesla customers are very well known for, you, they can't wait to show their product to everybody. And then self-discovery. If you're somebody who happens to stumble upon the product and you find like, holy crap, this thing's amazing. And then you go try it out and you're like, holy crap, this thing is so incredible. Imagine how sticky and powerful those forms of discovery are, right? And that's what Tesla is. Is just thick and thin, and they have a lot of data that backs this up, that they have by far the most loyal customer base, especially in the auto market. And so from that perspective, building a sticky customer base through having the best product period that as many people as possible can afford, as long as everybody is aware, as many people as possible are aware of this product, and it seems like they are, why would you mess with that formula? It seems like that's by far the best formula. Instead of you going out there and spending money to convince someone to buy your product, just put your product out there and let it speak for itself. Tesla has been doing it for a really long time, and they're about to have the best-selling vehicle period in 2023 with $0 in advertising. So I think that speaks for itself, but do let me know what you think. I could be going up completely the wrong tree. My dog just shook his uh, booty right next to me. I don't know if you heard that, but do let me know what you thought in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like me uh, from me like this one, uh, do feel free to subscribe right below this video. If you want to support the channel, I have merch in the description below. Uh, I have a link to my website. I'm not wearing one right now, but you can buy one of these shirts and I have many other products as well. And I also have a coupon for Athletic Greens, which is a supplement that I take every single morning and it's made my life a lot better. Truly, 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 I feel incredible every time I take this product. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this was informative and helpful. And do let me know what you think in the comments. We'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.